I don't know why. Hey, what's up? Hey, guys. I hope that you are <laughs> enjoying that view. Yeah. Uh, there you go. I think I think it's better. Good. Yeah. There you that go. Hey, guys. <laughs> well, sorry about that last minute. Uh, welcome to another one of our live session today. Is February the 14th here in New Zealand, which means it's Valentine's Day. So thank you for loving us. We love you too. Hey, wow, that is not <laughs> cheesy at all. <laughs> um, anyway, don't forget to buy each other perfumes, chocolate, and sexy lingeries because you you're know, only allowed to do it once a year. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right, so we're here to talk about traveling in New Zealand. We're here to um, discuss all topics of traveling in New Zealand because we kind of are the experts of traveling in New Zealand, right, Laura? Yes, that's right. And this is Robin and I'm Laura, and we're the team behind nzpocketguide.com, which is New Zealand's largest travel guide. And we literally have thousands and thousands of articles on there to help you plan the perfect trip to New Zealand. Of course, when you are actually able to come to New Zealand, because if you didn't know already, the borders are currently closed at the time of filming this. But it's never too early to plan the perfect trip. And the website will certainly keep you busy as we cover all types of travel from families, honeymoons or romantic stuff for Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, also, budget, luxury. It's a bit last minute stuff. planning if you're planning <laughs> yeah. your Valentine's Day now. <laughs> yeah, but you never know. Um, so we cover all that good stuff on nzpocketguide.com, which is probably the best place to go and get your questions about New Zealand uh, travel answered. But if you're not really into reading, we also do this live Q&A session that we're doing right now and you can come straight onto the live chat and ask your New Zealand travel related questions directly to us. Um, but if you do miss the live session, you, we also pull questions together from the comments section of any of our YouTube videos and we also go through those as well. Is there anything that I missed? Maybe the time we do this every every Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time is when we do our live sessions. We do have a handy link in the description below which tells you when those, se those sessions are scheduled in your time zone. Hey, you go. No, I think you, you you did hit everything. All right, we are starting a little bit slow today. <laughs> it has been a hard morning. <laughs> so uh, let's get started with what we have in the live chat. We have Comas that says hi. How are you doing, Comas77? AJ Shahal says, uh, hello, guys. What's up? I hope everything is great over there. Is, is everything great. great in New Zealand? It's Laura? excellent. Good. Especially today on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we are big celebrators. Oh, yay. Where's uh, the love heart uh, decorations, Robin? Oh, well, <laughs> as, as I said, we are big celebrators. Uh, Varun says, hello, guys. Good to see you again. How are you doing, Varun? Thank you for joining us another day. That's awesome. All right. So while you guys are getting warmed up and ask us questions in uh, the, the live chat right now, and as per usual, we read uh, everything. We do have some questions that we received uh, throughout the week. So let's get started with the first one that we got. And I think it's from a guy from Belgium, if, I, if I'm correct. Yes. Well, I maybe. He's from Ace called Anders. And Anders asked, I will be driving through Topos and stopping for only a couple of days, uh, one overnight stay. Can you guys recommend me a couple of cheap or even better free things to do to keep me busy? We absolutely can. So Topo, if you guys are not sure where it is, it is in the central North Islands. Um, it's a pretty cool place to um, base yourself to explore some of the uh, you know stuff that uh, you know central New Zealand has has to offer. It's really uh, geothermal. Uh, there is the largest lake in the country, and there is a big volcano. So uh, let's go over some of the free and cheap things you can be doing. The first thing you can be doing is to get uh, a nice view from um, uh, a little climb called Mount Tohara. Is it is it long? Um, it's it's not too long. I think it's it's only about um, maybe an hour, depending on how fit you are, and it is steep from like pretty much the entire way. So it can take between well forty five minutes if you're super fit to maybe a couple of hours if you just want to take it slowly. Um, so somewhere in between to get up, but usually on the way down it is much faster. <laughs> but basically, yeah, this is um a, well an, an extinct volcano right near um the to the town of Topo. You can drive there in easily five minutes, and yeah, it's a really nice climb through the forest up to um the summit of the mountain where there's some rocky outcrops and stuff and some really awesome views. Uh, best to go on a clear day so that you get views across Lake Topo all the way to the central island, uh, central North Island volcanoes of uh, Mount Tongariro and Narohoe and Ruapeu across the lake. It's really awesome. 
Um, probably something that everybody does um, is a hooker falls. I think it's a pit stop that even if you don't stop in Topo, you still stop at hooker falls. Yes, it is. It does have um, the sort of name for being like the most popular natural tourist attraction in New Zealand. And that's because it's so easy to access. And it's literally just um, like two second walk from the car park. And this is basically where the Waikato River, which is the uh, longest river in New Zealand, and it's a pretty big, big river, it squeezes down down this narrow canyon making some crazy crazy rapids until it eventually like tumbles off a waterfall at the end so there's lots of different viewpoints and short walks to get to see this um feature and you can get lots of really awesome photo opportunities there's also information signs to tell you more facts about how many liters of water are pouring through uh, hooker falls <laughs> at, the, at this time do you know it from the top of your head i don't oh, I, that's right. why i wanted to phrase it like that <laughs> All right, but so yeah. next up on our list, we have Spa Park, which is also a very, very popular uh, place there. And it's all to Muheke Stream, if I'm correct. Yes, I think uh, probably the pronunciation isn't on point. But yeah, that's it. Um, but the locals commonly refer to it as Spa Park. Um, and this is just a place that uh, you can either... It's, it's a little bit of a long walk from town or you can just easily uh, drive there. But it's, um, yeah, basically it's a natural um, hot springs which meets up with the Waikato River. So it makes this perfect temperature in between with cold and hot water coming together. Um, and yeah, it's absolutely free to go to and bathe in natural hot springs. Why not? Um, they've kind of redone up the area in the past couple of years. So there's like stands for sitting. There's even changing rooms. There's even a little pop-up cafe, yeah, cafe there. Yeah, so it's pretty much there's a whole setup for you to just spend um yeah, spend like half a day there relaxing. So that's yeah. pretty cool. And I have to say the Lil Something Cafe does pretty good coffee, and you can bring your own um reusable mug over there and you get a bit of a discount, which is quite good. Oh, yeah. Saving the planet cool. along the way. I like that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so next up, you want free food, you can have some. Uh, actually, you can just taste some free honey. At the Honey Hive, is that the name? The Hooker Honey Hive. Hooker Honey Hive. Yeah, so um, this is a, a little bit of a detour just before um, you get to Hooker Falls, actually. Um, so the Hooker Honey Hive has loads of different honey for sale, but the great thing about this place is that you get to taste the honey. Um, and they have all ty types of different honey products as well. Um, and why would you want to do that? Well, in New Zealand, Manuka honey is basically, if you've ever heard of Manuka honey, which is sort of branded as a, like a superfood um, or it has many health benefits. Well, Manuka honey is um, only made in New Zealand. So you get to taste various different types of Manuka honey. They also have live bee displays and you can do um, different uh, product tastings like honey mead, for instance. So it's a good place to just go and try a few things that's nice and tasty and sweet okay so we're going to stick with food so uh, i don't know if you guys know but topo is actually one of the coolest mcdonald's in the world it's actually inside an airplane uh, it's, it's right in the center of town so you can stop there and get a two dollar ice cream at mcdonald's over there and be done with that but um i think one of the best thing to do with food is to grab yourself some uh, cheap uh, fish and chips for example and go sit by the lake um, we do have an article on uh, NZ Pocket Guy with the best cheap hits in Topo, isn't yes, it? Yes, we do have um, an art. If you want to go check out some recommendations with fish and chips, we have um, an article on NZ Pocket Guide, which is uh, titled Cheap Eats in Topo. We also have... Very inspired name. Yeah. We also have um, the Foodie Guide to Topo if you're looking for something a little bit, for, bit different from the cheap eats as well. So, yeah, we cover all sorts of cool food stuff there. And speaking of that, that was my segue. Mm -hmm in the cheap eats and locals um, recommendation of uh, foodie stuff to do in Topo, there is the market. Oh yes, the uh, Topo market. Um, this is not actually within Topo town itself. It's um, a little bit, bit out in one of the suburbs, but yeah, it's a really good place to go to. Um, it's in a place called Acacia Bay, if you're looking for uh, looking for where it is. Um, and yeah, it's a good place to go to, to check out some uh, local crafts, local foods, um, and just sort of get that sort of community um uh, market experience because in most New Zealand towns um, around the country there are um, Saturday or Sunday markets so it's always good to um, just sort of experience that as a as a tourist. Now my segue, my next segue is a bit weird but once you mingle with people and you've seen enough people you may want to push one or two out of a cliff so maybe oh. you want to go hang out at the uh, uh, 
Bungie Place. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. That was, that was the worst segue in the world. Yeah. And I couldn't find a segue. So, <laughs> so, so still... um, yeah, there's the Topo Bungie um, is one of the places you can go bungee jump in the country. So, um, but if you are, you know, if you're looking for, you know, if you can't afford to do the bungee jump, because this is a free and cheap list right here, you can always go and watch people. You know, the the area to go and to do the Topo Bungie is like, it's free for people to just go and watch. So it's on, basically it's on Spa Road, which is on the way to um, the Spa Park, which we were just talking about with the hot springs. You can stop by on your way there, have, um, have a look at the people bungee jumping over the Waikato River, which is pretty insane. And all fun going through the water. And they yes. got free Wi-Fi. And I think they have free Wi-Fi and beanbags yeah. and stuff. So you can also just hang out there. <laughs> hey, you go. Okay. Uh, biking around Lake Topo or nearby Lake Topo or on the shore of Lake Topo? Yeah. So um, for bike hire, it's usually, I think, about $45. Um, I would either for the half day or the full day. Um, not 100% sure on prices. But so it's, it's going to be the most expensive yeah. of cheap things to yeah. do. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not... It's not it, I think it would still almost class as cheap, but yeah, hiring a bike and there are a ton of different bike trails around Topo um, and it can be done all year round because uh, because it's a volcanic area. The soil is pumice, so that means that the water drains through really quickly and you don't have muddy patches everywhere when you're trying to bike. So that's pretty Andy, cool. Yeah. Speaking of water, Aratiatia Dam. Yes, this is another place where you can see some insane rapids, kind of like Hooker Falls, but um, this is uh, at a controlled dam where they have, um, I think, four uh, release times throughout the day. And when they release the dam, you get to see all these rapids sort of, you know, cascading through a another narrow gorge. And there's little short walks to see it from different viewpoints as well. So if you can't get enough of rapids, then the Aratia Tia Rapids is really cool. And this is also a short drive just outside of Topo. So on nzpocketguy.com, we do have an article about the 10, uh, actually more than 10, I think it's 15 free and cheap things to do in a topo. So if you want to uh, know the next five one, uh, because we don't want to make that video last for too long, you can check a link in the description below or head to nzpocketguy.com. If you did find this video useful, you can hit the like button. You can subscribe if you're new here. We do those questions all the time. And this was recorded live during one of our live sessions. You can also join us during one of our live sessions. In the meantime, I'll go back to the live chat. What did I miss? It looks like you missed a lot. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, AJ uh, says the border are going to open for uh, students or not yet. There has been no news for you, mate. Sorry. Um, there's is, there is nothing nothing new coming up right now. So as soon as we have some news and there is some actually big announcements and everything, we do videos. You know that we do videos all the time on the channel. Um, but right now there's nothing nothing new. Extreme Talarita says, Morena, guys. How are we? Morena. How are we doing? We are good, yes. Good. Very good. Um, Varun says, it looks like a long... Oh, yeah, no, he's answering to somebody else. Navin Joshua says, happy Valentine's Day to you both. Happy Valentine's Day to you too. Uh, Clay mm -hmm. Bryant is spending Valentine's Day with us. He said, it's morning oh, all. How are you doing, Clay? Morning. Thank you for the pictures. I did receive them. I, I saw them this morning. I will reply to you. I just need to download them. And I will also tell you, what to do with your raw images if you want. Um, for the pyramid, so guys, uh, it's just following up on a ye uh, last week where we talked about the, the pyramid pyra walk in Dunedin, which are just little mountains, which are little cones shaped. Uh, and we'll be able to put those pictures on the website at some point. So that's going to be good. Yeah. Um, Navin says, when is New Zealand border will open for dependent spouse and children of international students? Uh, there is no news on that just yet. So yeah, that's not... Yeah, as soon as we get some news, we'll publish a video. But right now, there is no news. So if you only refer to our last uh, border opening prediction, which is border open opening predictions number five, you may want to refer to that and see, um, you know, where we are. But so far, there's literally no change whatsoever. Uh, Varun uh, says, we have been contemplating which island to pick to settle whenever the border open. Which one would you recommend basing uh, natural natural sights seeing and relatively soothing weather? Um, well, uh, both islands do have uh, both of those things. I'd say for sightseeing, leaning more toward the South Island. But for soothing weather, that's more in the North Island. So uh, to pick... The North of the South Island? The North yeah, portion of the South Island? Yeah, I was going to say. Island, so probably the best combination would be to settle on the South Island, but in the North of the South Island, perhaps around the areas of 
Nelson or Picton area, um, or the, basically the Marlborough region that usually has quite good sort of warm, dry weather. So that's a good place to settle if that's what you're looking for. Um, then we're having uh, Clay that says on the on the news the other day they said a small jar of manica honey sold for five thousand dollars at some fancy store in the UK. So he's off to go get some bees. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes, uh, sometimes some jars of like super fancy honey gets uh, gets get really expensive. Yeah. Anthony Comstock says Morena from Rodeo, California, USA. How are you doing, Anthony? How is it going in the US? Robert Laliberte says Joyeuse Saint Valentin. Uh, he's spelling in French. Um, guess what that means? Is that Happy Valentine's Day? Why are you bilingual already? Wow, amazing. <laughs> Now she says, last part of our, uh, he says, last part of our trip, we're slowly down, uh, we're slowing down with the two week stay in Fangaray. Looked on TripAdvisor for restaurant in the area, first base, 30 choice, half Asian food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of Asian food in, uh, in New Zealand, that's for sure. You may want to check on NZ Pocket Guide. We do have uh, the best eats in Fangaray. We also have a foodie guide of Fangaray. So maybe you want to check those one out on, on the website. Yeah, we um, usually. We, um, we'll narrow it down to less than 30 for you. Yeah, we also <laughs> split it up into different categories for. Um, for recommendations so we say a little bit about you know there'll be like um you know kiwi food asian food and then some like different types of things so uh, you can find some stuff on there clay is asking how do we spell uh the aratiatia uh rapid so here you go i think you'll be able <laughs> to see it here you go on the site i just find it for you in the meantime hey Boom. So, yeah, you can find it on the NZ Pocket Guide. Uh, if you want to go on the site, boom, you'll find yeah. all, all the spellings. But I hope that this did help. Robert Laliberte says, New Zealanders sure love their Asian food. Uh, don't get me wrong. I like Asian food as well, but I also do like variety. On that page, they list only four New Zealand eateries. <laughs> yeah. Well, New Zealand eateries is kind of a hard one to find because there's really nothing like typical, typical New Zealand. So New Zealand eateries will always be a little bit more like UK style or Bur burger places and stuff like that. So you'll, you'll have to uh, kind of be ready for international kind of food experience when you come to New Zealand rather than just typical New Zealand, you know? Yeah. Um, New Zealand's not really renowned for its food. Uh, so, yeah, if you're coming to New Zealand for the food, it's probably not not the best thing to come for. But for beautiful scenery and really cool activities, that's definitely what New Zealand's more about. So I should have read the next question of his because oh, okay. this is, <laughs> he says, so he, li he likes to try new, uh, local food, you know, when in Rome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Rome uh, on the North Island of New Zealand. Um, or uh, in Fangary, in this case, he say, I begs the question, is there such a thing as New Zealand cuisine? Mm. There is. So uh, there could, you could go down the route of um, Maori cuisine, which is um, they have like a traditional cooking method called a hangi, which is slow cooking food in an underground oven. It's quite um, it's quite a sort of popular Polynesian style of cooking food. Um, and you can find these sort of uh, things like if you go to maori tours or maori experiences especially in rotorua they have loads of different companies that do that like tamaki maori village or mitai tepuya um for instance they all sort of offer that experience if you want to try something more traditional but because that's such a it takes such a long time pre to prepare finding that sort of food experience just in any old restaurant is really really rare there are some um small sort of like Ta uh, sorry, small restaurants that do offer like hangies, but they're kind of like prepared a few days ago and they sort of, you know, it might not be as authentic as going to one of these sort of um, cultural tour experiences. So you could go down that route if you're wanting to look for something a bit more of what would be more New Zealand cuisine. You also have like pretty good lamb in New Zealand. They do really good lamb uh, lamb mm. dishes because there's there's a lot of of uh, of, um, of lamb here, and there's also like burgers in which they put beetroot in. Yes, and beetroot eggs. and eggs is a kiwi burger. So that's you how... still get the beef patties and the lettuce and the cheese yeah. and all that. You just add beetroot and eggs. Yeah, which, you know it's it's. Yeah, <laughs> let the silence speak for itself. But I like my burger normal. <laughs> yeah. 
But they, they are also um, fish and chips is something yeah. that uh, New Zealanders have sort of taken pride in, um, although it's not like it wasn't invented in New Zealand or anything. But because it's, you know, New Zealand is surrounded by um, around 15,000 kilometers of coastline. That means that there's always access to seafood and stuff around. So they kind of take their take pride in having super fresh fish and chips. So that's definitely worth trying in New Zealand as well. Uh, Milan Dino Fizio says, any update about uh, students about international visa process and when be, uh, will vaccination be started for New Zealand citizens? Okay, so um, there is no update for students right now. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, sadly, there is not, um, yeah, there is there's no, no news right now. It's just kind of a wait and see approach. But as soon as there is some news, uh, we obviously will publish a video on the channel. You know that we do updates and we even do prediction uh, videos and everything like that. But at the moment, we are sticking to the last prediction that we've done. So you may want to check this one out. Now, when it comes to uh, the vaccination, when will the vaccination start for New Zealand citizens? So uh, we are starting to receive some vaccines right now, but it's all going to go in stages, right? So um, the first people are going to be vaccinated are going to be the frontline workers. So, you know, uh, health workers, uh, people that work at the borders, people that work in the quarantine facilities and, and all these kind of things like you know, um, airline staff, just just airport staff, just all, all those kind of people. So all of those are going to be uh, starting to get vaccinated first. Then you're going to have the second stage when they're going to vaccinate people which are old or, or at risk, you know, and they're going to start vaccinating those people probably around the mid of the year, probably mid to, you know, two third into the year, they're going to start vaccinating those people. And then for a rollout to the general population, it's probably going to be around the end of the year. You know, it's a really long process. Obviously, New Zealand is not a large country, you know, by, by any stretch of the imagination. We're only about 5 million people. But that still means that we need to vaccinate 5 million people at two doses each. That's 10 million, 10 million doses. That's a lot. Um, so, you know, and you need to have trained nurse and staff that actually are able to do that and, and all that jazz. So there is, a, there is a lot in play right here. So we don't expect uh, the, the, the New Zealand population to be fully vaccinated until, you know, uh, fully. It's never going to be fully because you're always going to have some vaccine skeptics and, and all that. But, to you know, the, the, the mass, massive amount of, uh, of, of the herd to be vaccinated within, um, within the end of the year, it's probably going to be, you know, reasonably with some delays and everything obviously we want it to be in 2021 and and you know the plan by the government was to have like the year of vaccination is 2021 so the government wants uh, you know a vast majority of the population to be vaccinated by december however with a bit of delays you know input some <laughs> delay into there just to make sure and that's probably going to be uh, around the first quarter of 2022 probably you know let's say mid 2022 to be super super safe but yeah that's that's a little bit of of, uh, of context for you i hope that you understand that you know all that is conjectures nothing is sure you know that we haven't even started i don't think the first job has even uh, got 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 made just yet in new zealand so no one has been poked just yet so but it, so all that is kind of like the plan the best case scenario the things laid out on the uh, ministry of health website which i check regularly to see if there is any updates and everything so every time i give you guys news i'm actually getting the news straight away from the actual group government sources i don't go through third party medias or anything like that so i do my research really thoroughly but so far that's kind of like the plan that they have in short obviously the plan is much more detailed but in short that the plan that they have and that's um that's how, how things are going to proceed and um yeah that's also the time frame that has been kind of uh kind of uh, given just yet so i hope that answered your question uh, Clay is happy as well. I just uh, showed him with the spelling of Aratia Tia Dam. Varun says the vaccine may be delivered sometime next week. Hope it starts super soon. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we obviously all hope that the vaccines are, are going to be getting to New Zealand real soon. Man Malandino uh, says happy Valentine's Day to you both. Oh, thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, what do they do? What do they do? I've, uh, le yeah. I've learned that some people are doing the heart like that nowadays. They, they do We're too like... old for that, I think. Yeah, yeah. Look, look that's a little heart. I I've learned that recently. Um, I was uh, chatting with someone from the Philippines on the phone, and uh, they were doing that. I was like, doing that as well. Anyway, you learn every day, don't you? Um, Clay says, hey, easy on, it's great. Another key with food is barbecue and beer. Yeah, that, that's, that, you know, that's my point. I'm not saying that the food is terrible here, right? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm just saying is that barbecue and beer can kind of be found everywhere. It's not that kind of like mm -hmm. endemic, like you're never going to find that, you know, like in 
here or there you know like there's some region in france for example like uh, in Brit britannia for example you go there and you have some so specific uh, like type of crepes and type of recipes and everything which is made with like i don't know how you call that in english but like yeah some some specific Something flowers you can't even dream of <laughs> no but yeah. it's specific flowers so it's like literally you do not have that taste anywhere else so i find like aside from the hangi right it's hard to picture something that you're like i really never yeah. tasted that before right so that's 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 all i'm saying i'm Clay not saying was just that... saying he was meaning uh leave the beetroot and egg alone <laughs> oh okay well that 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 i strongly disagree with that i have a strong opinion mm. on you know I'm, I'm i'm going in the same kind of like you know i put that in the same boat than the wheat bix you know I, yeah. I just i just you know why do you put some beetroot in my burger in terms of the beer though um new zealand does have like yeah, loads, have really of, good beers. loads of different breweries and you can do lots of brewery tours and taste New Zealand beer so that would be something that I think um yeah that is a good thing to do if you are really into your drink and food and stuff and you're in New Zealand going on a brewery tour yeah. I think is a must yeah I think New Zealand will be in like my top three of like the the beers in the world you know I think mm. I think first I'll put Belgium second I'll put Germany and third I'll put uh, I'll put New Zealand so I yeah. think it'll be in my top three mm. and there is that's saying know, something <laughs> yeah there is hundreds of countries in the world so yeah. that's pretty good to be in the top three um Okay, uh, Robert says, uh, thanks, sounds like a lot, a lot like poi is the primary traditional staple food uh, in the native cuisine in Hawaii. I've tried that and that's pretty good. Yeah, um, and, and, uh, you have that in a lot of the like uh, Polynesian and Melanesian kind of uh, areas, you know, if you go to like Fiji and Tonga and everything, they have some yeah. uh, some similar similar kind of, how do you call it in, in Umu, right? Umu, I think in Tonga and Lovo, Lovo in, in Fiji. Fiji. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, but that's really awesome. That is so tender and anyway, it's mm, really good. Food. Yeah. Uh, Waijid Mohammed says, hello to you both. What about student visa for July 2021 intake? um if you ask me personally i say i don't think that's happening mate um but there has been no update there is no news as i mentioned a little bit before if you rewind a little bit the video i was talking to milandino and uh, talk about the vaccine and the border openings and all that but um we think that the new zealand borders are going to remain mostly closed until uh, 2022 right our prediction is november or december 2021 at the earliest and potentially 2022 more re you know more realistically so that's our prediction and we have a full video on the channel in which we go over pages look i still have the notes like that's pages and pages of just notes that that i've taken to just uh, have all the information for you guys right so you may want to watch out that video uh watch that video to have all the information but um july 2021 for students sounds really early uh the new zealand population wouldn't even be started to be vaccinated by then so i feel like getting through those students coming in it may be a bit tough now there may be and we do have a video uh, for especially for students there may be some uh, small amount of students or loads but they will all, all have to go on quarantine they will all have to pay the three thousand one hundred new zealand dollars for the quarantine um and they, they it has to be like people which probably already started the study in new zealand mm. you know like there's a of criteria that come in play like the last people that that came in there was only 100 students they had to be phd level they have to be physically in new zealand to uh, complete the um rest of the study so if they had any chances to finish their study uh you know online uh they said no you can't come in uh it has to you have to physically be here so there's a lot of stuff right here so i think july 2021 is a bit too um too soon uh, right, right hand, right hand, Hafid says, When will the border reopen? Laura, you take this one. Yeah, same as what Robin <laughs> was saying, really. There's been no official announcements to say that the borders, when the borders will open, because the borders are uh, are closed at the moment, just to make that really clear. Um, but yeah, there's been no announcements, and it looks like um, it basically, in our, in our opinion, it looks like the borders won't reopen for the rest of the year 2021. So that's just our opinion though that little section on the end but as of yet no official announcements i'm afraid all right so we're debating new zealand food right here we have nb 1968 which is from wellington and he says the kiwi cuisine is bland compared to other countries and clay uh responds and says he couldn't agree more he say uh, clay says clay is a local in dunedin uh, as well and he says i'm lucky enough to have a south american partner um, which has introduced much better food into our household other than fish and chirps. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of explains why there's so many Asian restaurants around, because it seems like even the locals want to eat, eat food from different countries. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Um, okay, we have Maya Bosel that says, any update about tourist visas? Um, so I think that tourist visas is not going to happen until the border are officially reopened. Um, uh, just because, you know, people like students and workers and everything like that are more likely to want to come to New Zealand for a longer amount of time. And therefore, they're more likely to want to put up with the 14 days quarantine. Until the borders are fully opened, um, tourists won't be able to uh, load to, to New Zealand. And for this reason, they're not going to bother trying to give visas. You're not going to get a tourist visas right now and not be able to come to New Zealand for another year. It's just not going to mm. happen. And so for this reason, um, we think that when they're actually going to say, okay, officially, we are going to reopen the borders of New Zealand on that date. When they do that, then they're going to start processing the, the tourist visas and, and everything like that. And for that reason, right now, we have absolutely no news for tourist visa bus. But our fingers are crossed. We really do want that to be uh, solved really quickly because, you know, it's just more fun to have more people coming here, traveling. And even for us right here, sitting on the couch, you know, right now we literally just talk about COVID-19 for the whole time rather than talking about, you know, awesome things to do in Dunedin or Wellington or stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Raihan Re says, uh, that's a question for you, Laura. How is the job scope for data scientists in New Zealand? <laughs> As the expert on da on data science, uh, well, yeah, since since we were traveling, what is data science? <laughs> <laughs> the science of data, I guess. Um, so yeah, since we are a travel channel, we uh, can we can answer questions about New Zealand travel, um, you know, with, with some sort of expertise behind it. But when it comes to the job scope for data science science in New Zealand, I'm afraid that is not our expertise. We can't really give you career advice for a very specific careers because, well, we're not really an encyclopedia of New Zealand and jobs and stuff. So I'm afraid that's not really what this channel is about, I'm afraid. Um, so sorry that we can't answer that question. Otherwise, we would just be, uh, we would just be telling you, I can't say, BS. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, yeah. You it's like, what's even... another way to say that? <laughs> So, yeah, we don't want to mislead you. Yeah. So for this reason, um, I, I don't think we're the right place to come. Tell. We're here to tell you the beautiful places in New Zealand. That, yeah. that's, that's what we did. Um, MB1968, again, the local from Wellington, he says, I love Asian food, especially Indian. Who doesn't lo love a nice korma? I couldn't agree more. Laura does <laughs> love her Indian food. Yeah, that's my that's my favorite type of Asian food as well. And is yeah. korma your favorite type of Indian dish? It's not. It's, 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 oh, no. she disagrees with you. Karma, karma's, karma's nice. That's all the the curry I try to make myself because um, it's kind of easier to make. But no, I, I'm more of a balti or a chicken tikka masala sort of person myself. <laughs> well, we are we are diving deep into the New Zealand cuisine right here, guys. I, <laughs> I love that. Um, Benny Grayling says, "Just checking in to say hi and thank you for all the awesome videos. Looking forward to visiting all the sites. Oh, that's awesome! Cool. Thank you very much for popping in, Benny. I love the fact you just take a minute to say hi. You know, we have 21 people watching right now. We get 14 of you guys that click the like button. Though that means this video must be useful to mm. some of you guys. So that's awesome. And on top of that, uh, you know, you guys are just you know pitching in and just asking you questions and everything." You know, the, the, the best part of that, this live session, right, is that we make it a conversation with you guys, you know. Like, if the live chat doesn't keep on going with um, with with questions, you know, we do have questions that other people have asked throughout the week, but it's so much more fun for me to just read the comments and kind of, like, discuss with you guys the subject that is on your mind at the moment, you know, like the Kiwi cuisine that we're doing right now. Uh, it is just really cool, and that was just spring up by uh, Robert that was just asking for some food in, in Fangary, and then you get a couple of locals like MB and Clay that just start pitching in because I'm all always found a cheeky way to uh to to tease them but uh but you know like that's too much more fun way it's kind of li lively and discussing with you guys so i appreciate you benny that's really awesome to just kind of, kind of take a minute to just pitch in and just say hi it means a lot i, I you know i just want to take a second to appreciate the fact i did that because i like that uh rehan says thanks to both of you you're very welcome rehan clay says what is in Cape Ringa? just a lighthouse and a sign or is it anything else to do that's a really good question mm. so I personally feel uh in, you know in Cape Ringa, there's yeah the lighthouse and the little walk to go and check out the two like the Tasman Sea and the ocean meeting and and you know like the water changing colors and everything it's really cool to do as well but I personally feel that one of the best thing about Cape Ringa is kind of like the journey to get there because everybody kind of starts from Pahia or 
okay, we can. But anyway, probably Pahia. Everybody starts in Pahia. And then it's kind of like the whole trip together. It's it's pretty long. I mean, for the whole day, if you only go up and, and then back down, it's going to take you about 12 hours. Um, we prefer doing it with the bus because it's a little bit more fun. Uh, you know, you actually have the time to relax a little bit rather than driving, driving, driving. Um, but yeah, so I personally, I personally feel like when I when people ask why is there in Cape Ranga, I think it's everything to go all the way up there. So there's plenty of uh, Cory walks that you can you drive on the on the 90 mile beach. Obviously, you have the sand dunes where you can do uh, sand boarding and everything. But there are actually some official dock walks and everything like that. Yeah. Right? So um, if you go on to nzpocketguide.com, we do have this article, which is, um, I mean, it's not a long list, but six incredible things to do in Cape Brianga, just to, that sort of tells you more about what there is actually to do really close to that area, rather than the stuff to do on your, just on your way up there. All right. So what's number one? Number one's obviously the, the lighthouse walk, the Cape Brianga lighthouse walk. So that's the thing that most people do when they go up there. You do a really short, I think it's like, 10 to 20 minutes maybe 20 minutes no, no, is a bit no. long it, it's 20 it's, it's 10 to 20 <laughs> minutes for us but we had some people in our bus that took like 45 minutes like they were pouncing yeah. trying to go back up please. yeah to go back up it is a little bit of a uh, an incline so um yeah but it, it's a really well paved walk it's really easy you can do it like uh, you know with boogies like strollers and stuff if you have kids and things so it's really accessible and that's a that's the main thing to do there um, and what i like actually when you when you go do that work i know it's the main thing and that's the thing you don't ask you ask for all the stuff but what i do like there is that there is a lot of sand that kind of explain a lot of both uh, the geology the natural landscape and everything but also a lot about the Maori culture there. There is apparently a lot of Maori significance. I'm not going to dive into it because I don't know enough and I don't want to overstep my bounds, but there's a lot of Maori significance. It's like a, 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 a sort of a sacred site um, uh, for the Maori culture. And it's actually super interesting. It's it's one of the most interesting kind of uh, Maori stories that I've heard uh, around that uh, that part of New Zealand. Yeah. Um, another place to visit which is really close to um, really close to Cape Brianga is uh, Topu Taputu Bay. Um, this is a really beautiful beach. Um, I've been on one tour where the bus actually goes. It's down. It's down a bit of a little, a little short gravel road, and the bus actually goes down there and takes you to this beach. I think that was with Awesome and Zed. Um, but yeah, but not all bus tours go there. But it was really cool to go to this amazing, really picturesque beach. So, and there's a ton of really beautiful beaches around there. Um, if you do the Tepaki Coast Track, which is it's actually a multi-day walk. I think it's about three days to do. And um, there's free campsites along the way. So you can go and stay there for free. And they're actually considering this is shortlisted to be one of the next great walks in New Zealand. So they may um, be turning this into a great walk where they actually have like proper huts. Do it before the price goes yeah, up. Yeah, so and, now it's and very... And before the, the, the flux of yeah. tourists get there. So do it now. <laughs> yeah, now it's very cheap to do. Uh, so yeah, there, there's that uh, multi-day trail you can do there. There's also another walk uh, there called the Twilight Tear Where Wairahi Loop Walk. Um, and that is, let me just see how long that is. That's 16 kilometers, four to five hours to complete. So you can stay there for a day. And that would be good if you are sort of staying in one of the campsites in the area. If you went there, camped overnight and did like a day walk. And that would sort of get you um, looking at, well, get to see beautiful coastal scenery and beautiful beaches mostly. is what That's what that area is all about up there. Um, so yeah, um, is that enough stuff to talk about? Or oh, I can I definitely go with more. But <laughs> I think I think Claire, you have enough, right? I mean, she can keep going for hours, right? <laughs> but I, th I think I think you have enough, right? Yeah. By the way, if you guys find that useful, hit that like button. Be nice. Tell YouTube that this video is not uh, meaningless and is full of useful content. Um, MB says Cape Ringa has deep cultural significance, meaning to the Maoris. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. here you go. Um, uh, that's the extent of what I know as well. There is stories, and I think I can kind of recall some of it, but I don't want to get it wrong, so yeah. I'm just abstaining and, from that. And nearby is Spirits Bay as well, which is also a really culturally significant place for the yeah. Maori as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, Beverly Gibson says, story, I'm joining late. That's okay, you're right, right here on time. We still mm -hmm. have a good 20 minutes to hang out together, Beverly, so you're not late. <laughs> uh, she says, can you recommend companies that offer day tools? What about tools for solo travelers? Um, so when you're going to want to search for day tools, Beverly, you're going to want to search for tools uh, from a specific area. So 
if we were starting with day tools, I mean, there are hundreds of day tools around New yeah. Zealand. It just depends on, you know, like where you are. You know, there is a ton of day tools in Dunedin that will take you to the uh, to the peninsula where you'll be able to see amazing, uh, amazing wildlife. There is some amazing day tools in Wellington where you're going to be able to see some of the awesome Lord of the Ring locations. There is some fantastic day tools around Rotorua where you can see some of the most uh, fantastic geothermal areas of the country. There are some day tools living out of Auckland that will either take you to Waitomo to go check out some glowworms or to uh, go to the Island Marine Reserve where you're going to be able to go kayaking on clear kayaks and see some amazing fish. Um, we just talked about going to Cape Ringa and there's some fantastic day tours that take you from Bahia going all the way to Cape Ringa and coming back down. There's amazing day tours from Queenstown that can take you down to Milford Sound where you'll be able to check out uh, you know, one of the most fantastic places in the world. Um, so there's really hundreds and hundreds of data around New Zealand. So if you want to narrow that down a little bit with us and tell us where you're going to base yourself and want to do the data tools, uh, there are a ton of them. Now, when it comes down to tools for solo travelers, I think one of the best ways to actually deal with that is to actually hop on, uh, a, like, literally a bus tour of New Zealand because then you get to actually meet some people as well as doing a lot of uh, stuff along along the way. We do have, actually, on nzpocketguide.com, if you click on um, play, prepare your trip and then transportation, and then you have bus tools, and we have a ton of articles in which we compare all the different bus companies which are uh, running tours around New Zealand, and we tell you a lot of information about what's included, what they do, and uh, what type of travelers they have and then you can kind of start narrowing it narrowing it down so that's a couple of tips that i will give you for right now because i feel like because your question is so broad right now you're just at that stage right now where we don't know which data you're talking about so if you just narrow it down a little bit for us then we can point you out in some awesome data because there is really a ton of them and you can see on the channel we have done ton of day tools. I would say we have done more than 100 day tools around new zealand easily yeah. um so yeah but I hope that was still useful to you. I know I know that's not the answer to your question, but I hope that was still useful to you to just give you a bit of context of what we need to answer your question. Um, and the good thing is you are you have plenty of time to chat with us, Beverly. So give us context. Yeah. Um, okay, MB says, uh, being the place where our... Okay, so he's explaining a little bit about the significance of Cape Ringa for the Maori. He says that Cape Ringa is the place where our dead depart for the ancestral homeland of Hawaii. Interesting. Clay Bryan says, uh, Autumn uh, is, is uh, responding to uh, Laura's... Uh, you know, Cape ramble Ringa. about Cape Ringa <laughs> for about half an hour. Uh, <laughs> she say, uh, He says, also, when we go with the camper, uh, there are places to park up for the night. And is a camper mate recommended or do you cover places to park up on your site? Do cover uh, many places to park up on our site. Campermate is kind of useful. Uh, let's be honest, it's an app. Yeah. If you guys don't know, it's an app that you can have on your phone. Uh, there's a lot of ad on there. So I'm just getting, you know, like... Uh, in Campermed, you basically can pay to have your business up there and everything like that. So, you know, like, mo like they only they basically only feature places which are kind of, you know, you have all the free free places, obviously. And then for like business and uh, tourist activities and everything, they, they only feature the places uh, that, that yeah. pay for it. So I just would actually just use the, for finding a campsite, there's a ton of, most of the campsites up there are Department of Conservation campsites so honestly i just go onto the doc website and look at their they have a whole whole range of campsites in that area so just go on there and check those out that's that's what i would do for um just for for cape Priyanga um campsites yeah because there's there's a little bit less commercial places up there i think so yeah yeah Next comment is for me, Laura. It, uh, it says, from Sam Sim, says, hello, beautiful man. I love New Zealand so much. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> nice. And I, I am beautiful. I am, I am very beautiful. Yes. <laughs> I, I would like to say I'm pretty. Um, MB says, thinking about buying a camper myself or a self-contained sprinter van. I think the self-contained sprinter van are the best thing. First, they're easier to drive. Um, they're, they're pretty easy to drive. They're not as wide and everything. They're mm -hmm. easier to park, for sure. And they actually have, surprisingly, a huge amount of room. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always been surprised by those ones. So, you know, when it comes down to camper van, and we have had experience with a lot of different types of camper van. Like, I mean, you know, every rental company you can think of, we probably tried every type of camper vans available in the country, right? And really, like, the Sprinter style are always my favorite. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that would be the one I kind of go for more than the Combi, more than the, you know, like, oh, more than the, the high top, more mm -hmm. than anything. Uh, it's the the sprinter van which is my favorite the problem is when it comes down to ratio like you know cost versus like space and everything they tend to be some of the most expensive ones uh, but i think they're pretty awesome yeah uh clay says he's going to go check out the website 
Okay, uh, Robert says, how do uh, I interpret the car insurance uh, uh, rider stating free insurance with uh, 1,200 excess for 25 years plus older? I have a problem with the word excess. Um, in North America, we have deductibles. Yeah, so it's similar. So basically, let's say you crash the van, right? Uh, you know, you crash the van and uh, the bill to repair the van is $5,000. You have free insurance. So you have to pay $1,200 New Zealand dollars and then the rest is covered by that free insurance. So that's kind of what your excess is. Uh, so it's about, it's about the same thing. So that's what you have to pay. So, you know, same thing. Sometimes you can reduce the insurance. So let's say you can have an insurance of like $5 a day and then you're going to be, um, you're going to have only a, an excess of $250. That means, let's say, you crash the car and there's five thousand dollars of, of invoices to kind of repair the car you pay 250 and the insurance pays the rest so that that's how this one works um so it's asking is it the same i did read your explanation on your current condition i must admit that i went into a coma halfway through uh, legalese has never been my strong point yeah i totally agree with you so i hope that this straightforward answer is, is a bit easier yeah. And you say, um, when you said uh, he's about as fun as a colorblind person playing Twister. <laughs> <laughs> Did we say that? <laughs> um, Sounds like something we'd say. Um, the most confusing part is when you get onto the car rental insurance and you were not kidding. Well, here you go. Yeah. We, we here, we're here to clear it through. Maybe we'll go over, I don't know, do you want to write it down quickly? Maybe we should go over the this article and just add the, a quick sentence to make it even clearer. Uh, we may just remove a joke and make the sentence clearer just so it's clearer for you and and, and yeah it is yeah so uh yeah thanks for the feedback robert that really means a lot you know one way you can uh actually give us feedback is at the bottom of each of the articles on nz pocket guy there is a button that says why is that your article useful or not right um and if you click no uh there is a, a box that opens and, and you can you can um write like any feedback, and it's completely anonymous, so we won't know it's you. I mean, you can sign your name if you want, but we won't know it's you. Uh, you can write the feedback and then send it to us, and then we we have those things popping up all the time. And so it helps us uh, know, like, oh, you know, these things, we could have made that more clear. We could have made that simpler and everything. That's a really useful way. And we have probably received about between 50 and 100 kind of feedback like that every week, and it really helps with the, with the website because we constantly kind of keep it up to date. Something is, something is not up to date, something has closed or something, and you know, a lot of people use that to kind of like give us that feedback is very very useful so um yeah if, if you could with that robert next time you you see that article just give us that little note and, and feel free to give us as much feedback as possible it's always super useful okay nabonil says hey 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 <laughs> i got accepted to both university of it's East Anglia in the UK and Victoria University in Wellington New Zealand any advice of which is better for student life no, I don't know. I have no idea, mate. Um, so, first, I haven't been to university because I don't necessarily believe in that too much, but that's a completely different subject. Uh, Laura has been to university and everything, but uh, she hasn't been to the I, East Anglia. No, I haven't been to university, university in university? East Anglia and I haven't been to university yeah. in Wellington. Um, but, uh, yeah, in terms of student life, we can only maybe talk about things around student life in, in Wellington. This channel, uh, although I am from the UK, this channel focuses on New Zealand. That's where our expertise is. Um, is. Um, but yeah, for Wellington, if you're looking for, um, you know, uh, I know jobs and things like that around student life, then yeah, there's a there's plenty of like hospitality jobs. There's plenty of like part time work and things like that going on. So you'll be able to, um, you know, do jobs and stuff while while you're studying. There's obviously student housing, all that sort of um, available in Wellington. Um, there's clubs, there's bars. Uh, things you'd expect in a student city, pretty much. Um, Wellington is the capital of New Zealand. Um, so it is kind of, I, I'd say it's one of the more sort of, um, for people that like cities, uh, Wellington is probably one of the better cities to base yourself in for, you know, food and culture and, you know, arts and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then it's in New Zealand and actually traveling around New Zealand, in our opinion, is pretty amazing. We are very biased on this channel, obviously, but yeah. Uh, traveling around New Zealand, staying in Wellington to travel New Zealand is where we would lean more towards, but we obviously can't give our opinion for East Anglia in the UK, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, cool. So Sam Sim says New Zealand is a great destination for LGBTQ. That is very true. There is, uh, there is uh, even some beautiful parts of Auckland, which are uh, like 
strong vibes over there as well. A uh, ton of awesome bars over there. The gay pride in New Zealand is a big party time. It's really awesome. And then he also said, yes, I am pretty. So here you go. Ah, I'm pretty. <laughs> uh, cool. Nathan Bath, which uh, was in Topo, if I remember. You came last week. You were in Topo and you were looking for some road trips oh, yeah. from there, if I'm correct. If I'm wrong, you got, <laughs> you are going to mock me. But uh, I think I remember you. Yeah? And he says, good morning. Thanks for the support from the last live session. Yes, li live stream. Uh, have you got any free ideas for Wellington for family road trip? Um, so you want free things to do in Wellington? That is one of them. Yeah. Uh, so on NZ Pocket Guide right here, we actually have a full article of free or cheap things to do in Wellington. And May, there is a lot of them. But yeah. we're just going to list a couple for you just uh, from the top of our minds. Um, but so if you want to educate your kids about uh, about the democratic process of New Zealand, you can do parliament tours. Why did you start we, with that one? <laughs> I just want to say that we did not enjoy it very much. But as an educational tool for your kids, that may be really okay. Um, a um, better educational tool I'll just move she on to <laughs> is the Te Papa Museum. That is free and that is that's fantastic for kids and all ages because there's all sorts of different exhibitions that are really interesting, really interactive, covering all sorts of aspects about um it's obviously just about New Zealand, but from the from nature to um you know earthquakes and volcanoes and stuff. So there's loads of stuff that I'm sure the whole family will find really interesting. Uh, you can also drive from Wellington to Cape Palisades, you're going to see seal colonies, this, uh, you know, a red and white painted lighthouse, a big amount of stairs to climb. It's a lot of fun. The kids would love it. Yeah. Uh, the Botanic Gardens in Wellington's also really cool. Um, it's like uh, there's so many different parts to these huge gardens. You can go to different flower gardens. You can go feed the ducks, which is always fun for the kids. They have duck feeding stations. So if you forget your bread, there's sometimes... Uh, food for the ducks in there but uh, to be honest when we've gone there it's been empty a lot of people empty it out i guess <laughs> um but yeah and then there's also like sort of um forested areas as well so it kind of feels like you can go on a bushwalk there too there's the cable cart museum um and you can even ride the cable cart up to the um, you have to pay for that though yeah that's about uh for an adult, I think it's around seven dollars. So it's not uh, expensive, return, but, yeah. but yeah, um, but yeah, uh, that's another idea the botanic gardens. So, here you go. I hope yeah. that that's enough ideas for you. But if you do want some more, Nathan, just to, you know, go ahead, just uh, ask it. And also, yeah, check out nzpocketguide.com. There's literally a ton of information there, and it's, it's all free. It's all free. We're not telling you to spend any money on the website. Yeah, there's no money to spend on the website. To be fair, you can't buy nothing. <laughs> we should sell stuff. Yeah, uh, all oh, right. Uh, Maya Bosale says, what is a uh, budget for one week if I use rental car, petrol, room, uh, rent, and food? Please suggest me. I'm considering very low budget. Okay, let me just count that for you. Car rental, uh, that's going to be... Okay, you want to get the cheapest one, so we're going to go for like a 40 bucks a day car. Uh, so that's going to be $280. Then uh, let's say you didn't tell me where you want to go. So let's say you're going to travel all around the north, and then you're probably going to have to fill up the gas tank about two times they all around the north end so you're going to do that so that's going to be 480 dollars in uh, so far total uh for room rents uh you want to do on very low budget so you're going to stay in hostels so that's going to be about 30 bucks a day so that's going to be 210 on that so we are at uh 690 dollars and then food if you want to uh, stay in hostel and be able to actually just uh do grocery shopping and cook for yourself in hostels uh, along the way and you want to do breakfast lunch and dinner i'm going to give you about for one person about 110 dollars so that's going to be that's expensive yeah but you're on the go so you do need yeah. to get a, a lot of different little things so yeah. i said i said i'd rather give you a little too much than not enough so that's going to be seven, 800 bucks. 800 bucks are the cheapest. That's what I will uh, say if you want to travel around North Island for one week. Renting uh, a car. Renting yeah. a car. If you give me a bit more context, my year, I'll be able to do a bit more. But, you know, that's yeah. that's what I come up with in the top of my mind. Adil says, Kia ora, uh, Robin and Laura. What is the uh, New Zealand official Department of Education website? Here you go. I prepared it for you. So you have it on my phone right here. So it's education.govt.nz and it should look like education.govt.nz look at those people educating themselves in a joyful <laughs> way it, it looks people. fantastic doesn't it okay mm -hmm. here you go um so education.govt.nz that's your answer my friend <laughs> michael mariano from hawaii aloha. aloha how are you doing he gives a tip to roberto by the car insurance and say check your credit card sometimes they will cover your vehicle insurance 
That is true. However, uh, with New Zealand car rental companies, they will actually make you pay the excess first, and then you have to deal with your credit card to get it refunded and everything. It's a lot of hassle. Just keep that in mind. Um, first-hand experience. Uh, Vikash um, says, hi, great channel. Thank you very much. We think so too. <laughs> Thank you for actually joining us. That's, yeah. that's really nice. By the way, guys, if you find this all those answers useful, hit the like button. We are working really hard on giving you all a free and awesome information about traveling in New Zealand. As, anyway, Vikash said, I wanted to know if it's possible to get an IT job from a foreign country in New Zealand. I'm a software engineer and I was planning to move to New Zealand. Uh, I think you have to sort out all your visas first and then, then you'll be able to get hired by, by a company and come to New Zealand. Otherwise, working remotely for New Zealand companies, that happens really often. I mean, some people that help us with the website with some of the most techy kind of um, thing are actually not in New Zealand. And, um, you know, it's kind of handy nowadays, you know, with the internet to work with people from all around the world, which is great. Um, but yeah, then moving to New Zealand, you have to sort out all your visa stuff first. Yeah. And to do that, we can't give you any advice or anything like that. It's, it's illegal for us to give you advice on, on immigration. You have to go to immigration.govt.nz. MB says, a lot of free walking track in Wellington and the Te Papa Museum. That's all the couple of tips for you, Nathan. MB is actually a local. He's living in Wellington. Yeah. So if you want to chat with him, you can definitely chat with him. Uh, I Irshad Sholdari. Oh, I'm really sorry. I destroyed your name, Irshad. But nice to have you on board. He says, good morning from Auckland. Hey, good morning, good morning from Auckland. Ishad, how are you doing? That's awesome. How is it going in Auckland? Is it as uh, overcast as it is here in the North Island? Uh, Clay says, we went to the Te Papa Museum with the kids quickly before going for lunch. We came out to go uh, for dinner. It was really cool. <laughs> that is really cool. The Te Papa Museum is so surprisingly Packed of amazing things to do over there. It's quite, it's yeah. so fantastic. I love the Tipapa Museum in Wellington. So Nathan, you see, three people recommend you that. Actually, four people. That's yeah. me, Laura, MB, and Clay recommend you the Tipapa Museum. So you've got to go there. Yes, absolutely. Um, Kiwi Lauren is here. Whoop whoop. Uh, she says hi. Uh, we are on February break, winter holiday for one week here now, and I uh, spaced on what day it was. And uh, oops. But hello from the still very cold Saskatchewan, Canada. Yeah, she sent some pictures of uh, Litty uh, frozen uh, uh, eyelashes last time. Hey, this is yeah, crazy. This is that crazy. That is insane. Photo of a lifetime. Say, I was waiting in a bus station when this lady asked me, how long have you been here? I said I arrived last night. She was, in fact, um, asked me how long I've been waiting for the bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, Clay says... Um, uh, by the way, in the Tipapa Museum, he says the kids got fed at the cafe there for lunch, so we didn't starve <laughs> them. Oh, yeah. No. Okay, good. Very good. good. Just to make, make that clear, okay. I feel like, Claire, you are always teaching me a line of, like, you know, uh, uh, being a bad parent every time you come to a live session. You know, every time it's kind of, you say something, you're like, oh, by the way, I was kind of nice dad. I, I gave them food. This is, it's always funny. Did you feed them when you went to the pyramids in, in Dunedin? Because they did look really skinny when they were walking on the picture you sent me. Um <laughs> Uh, where are we? Nabonil says, what is the most iconic souvenir you should get in New Zealand? And also, what's the most mm. iconic food? Oh, it's everything about food today. Mm. So I'm going to take the food. For the most iconic food, I think you absolutely should try hangi. It's uh, it's uh, Maori uh, food. So uh, Maori are the local indigenous culture here in New Zealand. And they basically slow cook your meat and vegetables underground. And uh, and and then they dig it out and serve it to everybody. And it's it's really awesome. It's super tender. It has like really, um, really herbal and really kind of like... It's it's yeah it's it's yeah, an earthy taste. It with it's like, really awesome. Yeah, they usually cook it with um, rosemary, so it's yeah, usually yeah. like really nice sort of rosemary herb taste. So yeah, so that that would be what I would say is most iconic food in New Zealand. You, you have to try. What's the most iconic uh, souvenir? Souvenir. I would say it is um, a, a jade greenstone or punamu. Uh, yeah. Many different names for it, um, but these are basically uh, greenstone pendants um, that you can get as necklaces. Um, I would say the best way though to um, have get that as a souvenir is to actually carve it yourself. There's loads of different sort of workshops around New Zealand where um, you can spend the whole day carving, like designing and carving your own greenstone pendant, which is a really cool souvenir to take home. Here you go. Yeah. Punamu. Punamu. Uh, Nathan says, uh, any places in Wellington to visit because my sister is into history? 
Well, I think the Parliament is going to be something she really gets a kick out of it. And obviously, the Te Papa Museum, which has a lot of exhibition about the history of New Zealand, is going to be, she's going to get a kick out of it as well. I'm going to give you an extra tip on your way down, driving down from Topo, because I know you're in Topo and you're going to Wellington. Stop at the Army Museum in Wauru. And uh, mm -hmm. your sister, if she's into history, she's going to love that because it goes through like the involvement of, of New Zealand in several wars around the world and has a lot of artifacts. And she's really going to love it. And it's probably about it's not halfway through on the drive, but it would be a really nice pit stop because the drive from, from Topo to Wellington is quite long. Yeah. So here you go. Here's an extra tip to dazzle your sister. <laughs> That's very dazzling. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ideal say thank you to me. Um, MB is recommending you to Papa again, Nathan. Um, Ishrad says, yes, I know it's difficult to say my last name. Uh, it's pretty good day there in Auckland so far. Touch wood. Yep. Yeah, well, you know, it's New Zealand weather. It's not going to stay a, long, yeah. a good day for too long. <laughs> but that's how we like it, isn't it? Um, so what are you doing for the weekend, Ishrad? Are you doing anything fun around uh, New Zealand that we can tell to people around the world uh, that is awesome to do in Auckland? What's your local tips uh, to travel in Auckland and to do things? Uh, Kiwi Lorenz says, I just miss all the little things about New Zealand. I can't wait to get back there. Even the marshmallow that you get uh, with hot chocolate are so different than they are here in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Why would you put marshmallow in the hot cocoa? Yes, Robin's <laughs> not a fan of marshmallow. Um, MB is agree with me. says, uh, if you want a best souvenir, it's a bone tiki or green stones. That's quite cool. It's agreeing with me, actually. I said that. Uh... Oh, that's true. <laughs> I agree with Laura. We are, I mean, we, our minds are one. <laughs> I'm, I'm such a self centered bastard. To <laughs> Uh, okay. Hellhound. Hellhound Hobo. Hobo. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's a name and a half, my friend. Yeah. Says, hey guys, I'm hoping to go to New Zealand in about two and a half years. I'm waiting to buy a car and turn it to a self-contained -contain one and travel in that. What's a good amount of cash before I go on my trip? Thanks. So, um, I'm guessing you're going to come in a working holiday visa and you're going to come for an extended period of time if you want to have time to kind of convert a van and everything like that. So, mm. I'm guessing you're going to come for that. So, your minimum amount of money you're going to need is 4,200 New Zealand dollars, which is the minimum required by Tourism New Zealand, sorry, by Immigration New Zealand for you to be able to come. We actually say that 5,500 New Zealand dollars plus uh, your return tickets uh, is the best amount of money to have. So that's, that's, that's what we usually say. We have multiple videos on the channel. So if you want to check out more like what's the budget for a working holiday visa, for example, we talk about 10 minutes and we, we divide everything. And you're going to really love that. So check that on the channel or on nzpocketguy.com. We also have those on there. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what we say. And on top of that, I think you should have the amount of money that you want to spend on your van. So start looking on website like tradesme.co.nz, for example, and in there you'll be able to look at vans, the price of vans, as well as uh, as the price of like you know items that you're going to need to um, to find to new van and do your calculation right here. But so I would say like five thousand five hundred New Zealand dollars for your kind of everyday life things to be able to get started and you know to have time to explore a little bit before you have to find a, a seasonal job along the way. And what you're going to need for the van, which I'd say is probably going to be about five to six thousand dollars on top of that. So yeah. I'd say, you know, to be safe, maybe eleven to twelve thousand New Zealand dollars, and you should be good. Plus your flight, obviously. Yeah. And although it, the reason Robin is specifying van, and you say you want to turn a car into a self-contained um, vehicle, is She's that right. cars basically don't have the required amount of space to actually have all the self-contained elements within it, like the because, uh, for instance, you have to have a toilet that you can also use while the bed is open for instance so that's why you you will have to get an actual van to be able to turn it into self-contained you won't be able to use it as a car that wasn't the case like a few years ago people you were allowed so to a do... lot of the information you find online right now is actually too old and it hasn't been updated yes exactly so Except here. <laughs> yeah so um now you do have to have a van you can't just turn a car into a, a self-contained vehicle just to make that clear yes um, Claire Bryant is reassuring us and says they went to the Portobello pub after the pyramid for a feed in the garden. It was a stunning Ooh, nice. day. So the kids had fun and they were fed. Look at you. Awesome, Dad. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm just going to keep on teasing him. <laughs> uh, Kiwi Lauren says, what on the food topic? There is chocolate fish, the potato chip dip, um, potato chips <laughs> dip, and uh, that the kiwi make out of onion soup, kumara, my favorite, and uh, good curries. And Nabonin says you have to elaborate on the chocolate fish. So the chocolate fish is actually marshmallow uh, shaped like a fish and then dipped into chocolate. So it's a candy. It's not fish with chocolate. Nabonin, says, don't <laughs> yeah. panic. You need to elaborate on that yeah. chocolate fish. It sounds kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> 
Uh, Nathan Bates says, uh, thanks for the idea and have a great day. Bye. Bye, Nathan. Come back Bye. next week, maybe. <laughs> Some more questions yeah. or things to do. It's always awesome to have you on board. Clay says, what about the stamped coin souvenir? They're everywhere. Yeah, that's true. I found them so cheesy, though. Um, so it's not really something that... I don't know if um, I've seen them in New Zealand. You have. have I? Yeah. Maybe I just ignore them. Like, it's it's too too awful to look at. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, that's a, that's, a souvenir. that's a cool souvenir. It's just that uh, I just <laughs> think it's really cheesy, so I've never I remember really seeing uh, them in other countries that. around the world, but yeah. yeah. All right. Um, then we have <coughs> Kiwi Loren that says, my favorite uh, uh, souvenir is... Uh, my Corey tattoo, and I had one done in Wellington as a music teacher. I made it into a clever design. Well, Corey with two dots beside it, so it looks like a brass clay. Oh, oh that's cool. Awesome. Um, Ishrad says, uh, enjoy the sunshine, a bit of gardening today, and may have to drive to Mission Bay for a nice Ooh, coffee. Ooh. And ice cream and waffles, and they do all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, go get a waffle Bay. for us. We do miss the waffle of Mission <laughs> Bay. We do miss that now living out of Oakland. We can't get our waffle fix as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. So get a waffle for us. Um, Kiwi Lorraine says, my Kiwi friend uh, see a Koru, my Canadian friend see a brass clef, and my Kiwi musician friends are like, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, so you need a specific smart. type of friend to get what your tattoo is. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good tattoo. <laughs> uh, MB says, the New Zealand Greenstone slash Punamu value is um, that the oil from the wearer's skin melt into the stone, making it a precious heirloom to be passed from wearer to wearer. Oh, Ooh. that's a cool tidbits yes. to cool it fact yeah um uh, robert uh, is advising he will arrange to go to tim hortons ah just get something tim bits <laughs> um hellbound thanks for uh, hellbound hobo says thanks for the info You're anthony comes to says stay there but i'm here stay until the end stay safe oh uh, yeah <laughs> well, he says i'm here until the end that's why he uh, says yeah. all the time so i get you <laughs> clay says extremely cheesy i'd rather use my coin for parking than <laughs> <laughs> yes that's very we true agree. <laughs> and uh yeah um kiwi lauren and robert are chatting about tim hortons yeah that, that, that is that's some good coffee all right guys thank you for joining us for another live session it was awesome to have you guys on yeah. board we'll be back here next week at the same time so it's 8 a.m uh new zealand time every sunday there's a link in the description below to tell you when i uh, will be back uh in the meantime you can poke our brain 24 7 on nzpocketguide.com Hey, you go. Super cheesy uh, double <laughs> chat here right here. And uh, yeah, well, if you're watching a replay of this video and we didn't get to answer your question, you can put it in the comment section of any of our videos. We pull them up. We answer them reg regularly. And yeah, we are we, we always here to help. Whew. On that note, see you next week and <laughs> yes. stay, stay safe. Bye, guys. How do you stop that today? Oof, end I'm stream. End oh yeah, stream. yeah. I'm struggling today. I don't know. <laughs> I have why. to wave my arms all day. <laughs> okay. If I keep, if I don't just press, do it. <laughs> should, I, should, I, should I press? You know, she's not waiting anymore. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>